Hello everybody and thank you for joining me in this new short video from my ECG exercises. I hope you will enjoy this video and join me here in my future video presentations. If you are new to my channel, please do not forget to subscribe. The today's ECG belongs to a 26-year-old man who was admitted due to frequent therapy refractory premature ATR contractions for catheter ablation. Here, the baseline ECG shows frequent premature atrial contractions, and in the next ECG, we see one PAC with a longer coupling interval, which enables us to analyze the P-wave morphology and so uh, somehow localize the PAC before catheter ablation. So this is one algorithm that we can use, and um, it was published in Jack EP in 2021. Uh, I, we see here that the P wave in V1 to V6 are all positive. It means we have a positive P wave concordance, and this means that the, uh, the PAC comes from the left atrium. So going back to the algorithm, the V1 is positive, so the next um, uh, step is to look at the V1 or L2 to uh, see for the notching in the P wave. And this is exactly what we see here in V1. So the next step in this algorithm is look at the P wave in lead one. And this is positive. So the P wave should come from somewhere close to the left pulmonary vein or left atrial appendage. So it is very difficult uh, somehow to map these premature atrial contraction, especially automatic mapping of premature atrial contraction, especially when the, uh, the coupling interval of these PAC uh, varies from bit to bit. But one can help us to make an automatic mapping and ablation using a multi-electrode mapping catheter and also using the CS pattern matching to differentiate between clinical premature atrial contraction and catheter-induced premature atrial contraction and sinus rhythm. And in the next slide, we see uh, the premature atrial contraction on the multi-electrode mapping catheter inside and close to the left superior pulmonary vein. And based on multi-electrode mapping with automatic CS uh, pattern matching, we were able to automatically map these premature atrial contractions based on ECG. We thought it might be very close to left superior pulmonary vein or left atrial appendage. And actually the map shows a close proximity of the PAC to the left superior pulmonary vein, actually on the ridge between left superior and left inferior pulmonary vein, which was successfully then ablated. This is the ECG before catheter ablation, and this is the ECG after catheter ablation, and also during the short follow-up after this ablation, during the last three months, the patient remained asymptomatic. There is an interesting article published in 2017 in patients with uh, PAC ablation, and in 35, they compared 35 patients with PAC in the, uh, and 35 patients with PAC and atrial fibrillation. This is the localization of the PAC. Uh, as you can see, the, some of the patients were very close to the left superior pulmonary vein, other regions were left atrial appendage, roof, the pulmonary veins, septum, and on the right side, as usual, um, uh, parahiser and also crista terminalis or isthmus osseus osteum were the, uh, the most common regions uh, from them um, these PACs originate. The catheter ablation acutely in 35 patients with PAC and no atrial fibrillation. In 35 of these patients, the catheter ablation was successful in 32 patients. And on the long-term follow-up, 29 patients remained asymptomatic. So in conclusion, that was a short video uh, on localizing the PAC using ECG and also using CS pattern matching and multi-electrode mapping to automatically map 
these premature atrial contractions and differentiate these PACs from sinus rhythm and also catheter-induced PACs easily for mapping and successful ablation. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would like to invite you joining me here in my future video presentations. Thank you. Thank you.